Hey everybody, tonight's video is called The Burden Against Tyre, and tonight we continue our pass-through study here in the book of Isaiah, where we're looking at the burden against Tyre. So today's chapter, we're going to see the oracle of judgment announced concerning Tyre, and we're going to see the commercial systems that don't take God into consideration what happens. And when we go through chapter 23, keep in mind that this is a general and symbolic wording of the chapter. It is not historically specific. And uh, so we're going to read chapter 23 today, verses 1 through 5. And this video won't be as long as Saturday's. Uh, Isaiah 23, verse 1 starts out, The burden against Tyre, Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for it is laid waste, so that there is no house, no harbor. From the land of Cyprus it is revealed to them. Be still, you inhabitants of the coastland, you merchants of Sidon, whom those who cross the sea have filled, and on great waters the grain of Shehor, the harvest of the river is her revenue, and she is a marketplace for the nations. Be ashamed, O Sidon, Sidon, for the sea has spoken, the strength of the sea, saying, I do not labor, nor bring forth children, neither do I rear young men, nor bring up virgins. When the report reaches Egypt, they will also be in agony at the report of Tyre. So I think it's important that I mention Tyre is a Phoenician seaport on the Mediterranean Sea, approximately 35 miles north of Mount Carmel and 28 miles west of Mount Hermon. And it was a place that in First Kings that supplied lumber for King Solomon's temple. So they had a very significant connection commercially. And Tyre also provided sailors for King Solomon's navy in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 26 through 27. And Tarshish is likely in Spain, and its ships were large trading vessels capable of making long distant voyages on the open sea all the way to the port of Tyre. And Tyre was under siege five times between the prophecy here in 332 BC. And the only, the last of these attacks in 332 BC by Alexander the Great completely leveled and subdued the city. And later next year, we're going to be looking at the book of Ezekiel, Lord Willen, where Ezekiel prophesizes this destruction in chapters 26 and 27. And sailors would find no customary haven of rest upon their arrival at their destination of Tyre. And upon reaching this island in the eastern Mediterranean, the seamen would learn of Tyre's overthrow. In Sidon, in verse 12, was the other important Phoenician seaport along with Tyre. And here we see it represented the rest of Phoenicia as reflecting the country's response to Tyre's overflow. And the Phoenicians carried much grain growth in Egypt. They were represented by Sahor abroad their ships. And they also bought and sold much of their commodity. commodity. And Isaiah spoke of barrenness, labor, and children birth frequently. And it wasn't because, you know, he's trying to be some unsensitive guy. But, you know, he uses it as a metaphor across the book of Isaiah. And it always means, you know, hardship or something along those lines. And Tyre is known as they are the strength of the sea. And Sidon couldn't be overconfident. In verse 6 through 9, says, Cross over to Tarshish, wail you inhabitants of the coastland. Is this your joyous city, whose antiquity is from the ancient days, whose feet carried her far off to dwell? Who has taken this counsel against Tyre, the crowned city, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are the honorable of the earth? The Lord of hosts has purposed it. 
to bring to dishonor the pride of all glory, to bring into contempt all the honorable of the earth. So Tyre's refugees had traveled throughout the Mediterranean world, and they too lamented the city's fall. And Tyre was a very old city dating back two millennia before Christ, 2,000 years. And Tyre was known for her reverently, origin, far-reaching influence, wealth, and fame. And Tyre had very high international status. So why did God bring the overthrow of Tyre, this prosperous nation that's pretty well developed at this time? It was because they were foolish, relying on human glory and pride. And in verse 9, remember the Lord of hosts is the Lord's military title as general, and I've mentioned it in prior studies. And the Lord is against the proud and self-exalting. And I know we're entering what they call Pride Month in the LGBTQ community here in just the next few days. Just keep that in mind when you think want to think about your pride. The Lord is against pride. Nations have fallen because of pride. And, you know, I believe we're heading that same route. Uh, verse 10 through 14 to continue. It says, Overflow through your land like the river, O daughter of Tarshish. There is no more strength. He stretched out his hand over the sea. He shook the kingdoms. The Lord has given a commandment against Canaan to destroy its strongholds. And he said, You will rejoice no more, O you oppressed virgin daughter of Sidon. Arise, cross over to Cyprus. There you also have no rest. Behold, the land of Chaldeans, the people which was not. Assyria founded it for wild beasts of the desert. They set up its towers and they raised its palaces and brought it to ruin. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for your strength is laid waste. So the oracles invited the colonies of Tyre to exercise their freedom and take an advantage of the city's fall. And the Lord had caused the downfall of the territory of Canaan, which included Tyre and Sidon. And the God, our God, is Lord of land and sea. We must know that God is sovereign over the air, the sea, mountains, valleys, wherever you want to think of. And Canaan included Tyre and Sidon, if you didn't get the that part yet. And in verse 12, the virgin daughter of Sidon, it means the inhabitants of Sidon. And Sidon was a city that was once noted for its freshness and revelry, will become like a used up old woman piercing together what's left. And God used the Assyrians to crush her. And in verse 13, the Chaldeans, we can think of the Chaldeans as just another name for the Babylonians. And the Babylonians reminded Tyre of their hopelessness against Assyria. And Assyria went on to ravage Babylon in 689 BC. In verse 15, 16, it says, Now it shall come to pass in that day that Tyre will be forgotten 70 years, according to the days of one king. At the end of 70 years it will happen to Tyre, as in the song of the harlot. Take a harp, go about the city, you forgotten harlot. Make sweet melody, sing many songs that you may be remembered. So the devastation of Tyre was not permanent. And a little village remains on the site of the ancient city to the present day. And harlots, they sang to draw attention to themselves, attention not so hard to obtain in the ancient days. And like those harlots, the people of Tyre were invited to sing songs drawing attention to their earlier status. And when we see the number 70 in the Bible, we should always remember the number 70 means completeness or fullness. In 70 years is not possible to determine specific time to which the prophecy refers, but it's the same amount of time that was uh, length of the time prophesied for Judah's exile 
later on in Jeremiah 25, verse 12, which Lord will, and we're going to be in right around October, if I did my math right. In uh, verse 17 and 18, to finish today's chapter, it says, And it shall be at the end of 70 years that the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her hire and commit fornication with all the kingdoms of the world on the face of the earth. Her gain and her pay will be set apart for the Lord. It will not be treasured nor laid up for her gain will be for those who dwell before the Lord to eat sufficiently and for fine clothing. So with God's help, the city was to return. And like an aging harlot, Tyre forms economic alliances with anyone who enriches her regardless of ethics and even Tyre's sinful gain was to support Judah as her colonies once supported her and that's the result of the Lord's sovereignty causing Tyre to pay tribute and the wealth of the nations builds up the kingdom of God as we see across the book of Isaiah and also the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse 7 and 8 so to wrap up tonight we look at the promise of the coming judgment against Tyre as the sailors of Tyre agonize when they hear of the destruction of their home port. And verse 6 through 9 showed us the proud city of Tyre being humble. Verse 10 through 14 shows us the destruction of the city of Tyre. And then we see that the chapter moved into a promise restoration to the city of Tyre. And verse 15 and 16 shows us 70 years of desolation for the city of Tyre. And the chapter ended with, God, with God's purpose in the restoration of the city of Tyre. Did you know that the city of Tyre was back in the New Testament? And I want to go over to Acts chapter 21, verse 3 and 4. It says here, when we have cited... Cyprus, we passed it on the left, sailed, sailed to Syria, and landed at Tyre. For there the ship was to unload her cargo. And finding disciples, we stayed there seven days. They told Paul through the Spirit not to go up to Jerusalem. So the Apostle Paul, when he went to Tyre, he found many Christians in Tyre. So that is something positive to look at Tyre to come in the new testament but we're going to wrap up right here and we'll see you next as we'll be looking at the scene the scene of god's judgment we're going to see the character of the judgment of the lord so i hope you have a great rest of your evening and i hope that you had a great holiday and we'll see you next to be announced god bless